love dissolves all bondage and brings us liberty. If I may just say one thing in introducing Reverend John this morning. This man is a perfect expression of love. And the love which radiates from him dissolves all bondage. Reverend John. Wow. I'm expected to talk after a baby blessing and that introduction. Ex exhale with me. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful family again. What a wonderful joy it is to welcome you and to welcome those who listen to us on the World Wide Web. And speaking of the World Wide Web, Google, the search engine behemoth, published a supplement in a recent New York Times which takes a look at some of the most searched stories in 2014. Now, the name Google is a play on the word Google, which was coined by Milton Sirota, nephew of American mathematician Edward Kastner. For your information, a Google is a number equal to 10 to the 100th power, or more colloquially, an unfathomable number. You will agree that this is an apt name for a tool which searched trillions of times in 2014 alone for answers to questions posed by countless numbers of people on planet Earth. Well, friends, can you guess what the most searched question posed by people in 2014 was? Can you guess? This is the first Sunday of Love Month. What do you think the most posed question was? What is love? What is love was the most asked question. And let me quote Google. In 2014, romance was alive and well. Of all the trillions of questions the world asked this year, what is love topped the charts with five times more searches than what is science. But when it comes to puckering up, we lack a little bit of guidance and searched how to kiss more times than any other activity, including how to survive. <laughs> I'm not surprised that in a world torn by war and strife, so many people want to know what love is. But I'm a little surprised that they want to know how to kiss. I remember when I was a kid, there was a, a, a movie called Annie, Annie Get Your Gun. And she sang, Grandpa Dick was never sick. He never saw a doctor. He only died at 93, doing the water comes naturally. <laughs> Jane, one day you'll grow up to understand. <laughs> but they wanted to know what is love. And we need to find a way to let them know, we as a spiritual community, that all they have to do to get the answer to the age-old question is to drop everything and beat a path to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. <laughs> or if they're not fortunate enough to live in beautiful Jamaica, to find the nearest New Thought Center wherever you live. You see, in our movement, we teach that life is a work of heart. I'm not mispronouncing, mispronouncing A-R-T. Life is a work of heart, and that it is in this center within us that we truly find God. So today's encouragement is titled, your life can be a work of heart. Let us say together, my life is a work of heart. Can we say that? My life is a work of heart. A Course in Miracles gives this advice. Quote, when any situation arises which tempts you to become disturbed, say, and I quote, 
There is another way of looking at this. And then just add to it immediately, I choose love instead. Can we say that? Yes. The other way of looking at things, friends, is to go into your heart space and see them through the eyes of love. In my experience, nothing changes your life for the better more quickly or more consistently than the decision to love. As author Colette Burnham puts it, and I quote, love has the innate ability to look past the human and see the godly, unquote. Ernest Holmes, that great loving soul who gave the world this teaching known as the science of mind, writing on friendship in the science of mind textbook, for those of you who like references, page 299, says, and I quote, it is a law that the man who sees what he wants to see, regardless of what appears, will someday experience in the outer what he has so faithfully seen in the within. From selfish reasons alone, if from no loftier reason, we cannot afford to find fault, to hate, or even to hold in mind anything against any living soul. The God of love cannot hear the prayer of the one who fails to love." Unquote. So friends, everything in your life making decisions, your lifestyle, your career, raising children, your friendships, your contribution to society, everything will become more wholesome and coherent when you choose love because your life is a work of heart. Have you ever contemplated the shape of the human heart? I was just at Dr. Sonia's office last week and there was a little model of the heart on her desk. It's not quite a circle and it's not quite a triangle, but a sort of blend of these two, two contours. And I thought if you view the heart using the metaphor of a triangle, its three-sided composition could be said to represent the structure at work in friendship and love. There's you on one side, your friend on the other, and the spirit of your friendship creating a third dimension, which completes the triad. You, your friend, and your friendship. The interesting thing is that the spirit of the friendship between you is more than the sum of the other two sides. You can therefore think of your friendships as a holy trinity of originating, enduring, and completing love. Let us affirm, my friendships are a holy trinity, together, my friendships are a holy trinity of originating, enduring, and completing love. Of originating, enduring, and completing love. No wonder the beautiful Jesus told us that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Someone once said that our relationships with our friends should be like the relationship between our two eyes. Do you know what the relationship is between your two eyes? You do. Let me not tell you then. Your two eyes blink together, they move together, they cry together, they, they see things together, they sleep together, but they never see each other. And that's what friendship is. Let's look at the heart then from the other side, from the, from the metaphor of the circle. A circle is an ancient symbol of unbroken continuity, belonging, and permanence. Viewed as a circle, the heart may be seen as a place of both arrival and departure, a place of endings and new beginnings. All the depleted blood arrives at our heart to be refreshed and revitalized, and it is from this center that the newly revived life force sets out to nourish, heal, and restore our body temples. Irish author and poet, 
John O'Donohue, who draws heavily on Celtic spiritual traditions for his, his poems and his writings, writes this, and I quote, because the heart dwells in unattended dark, we often forget its sublime sensitivity to everything that is happening to us. Without our ever noticing, the heart absorbs the joy of things and also their pain and care. Within us, therefore, a burdening can accrue. And for this reason, it is wise now and again to tune into your heart and listen for what it carries. Listen to what he says, it's, uh, that's the end of the quote. It is wise now and again to tune into your heart and listen for what it carries. I wonder what your heart is carrying this morning. And so I want you just to place your hand over your heart for a moment. And if it's comfortable for you, gently close your eyes and feel the reassurance that there beneath your hand, at the center of your body, that precious symbol of love holds your life within its sure circle. Now with your eyes still closed, Listen for what your heart is carrying today. If there are murmurs of sadness, pangs of regret, or any pain there, just silently say to your heart, God's love is healing you now. God's love is healing you now. And with your eyes still closed, let me read you Ernest Holmes' Meditation of Friendship from the Science of Mind textbook. God in me is unified with God in all. This one is now drawing into my life all love and fellowship. I am one with all people, with all things, with all life. As I listen in the silence, the voice of all humanity speaks to me and answers the love that I hold on out to it. The great love which I now feel for the world is the love of God and it is felt by all and comes back to me from all. I understand all people, and this understanding is reflected back to me from all. I give friendship, and therefore I have friends. I help, therefore I am helped. I uplift, therefore I am uplifted. I am now surrounded by all love, all friendship, all companionship, all health, all happiness, all success. I am one with life. I wait now in the silence while the great spirit bears this message to the whole world.
take a deep breath. And very slowly, when you are quite ready, open your eyes and come back to the present, but bring that deep feeling of peace and love with you. Another deep breath and slowly open your eyes. Everybody back? It's sweet to go inside. Eh? Friends, one of the best things you can do to be healthy, wealthy, happy, and self-actualized as a person is to love yourself unconditionally. Loving and honoring your own inner self and treating yourself with respect and dignity is the easiest pathway to peace and the joy of being. And this brings me to your assignment. Your assignment, your mission this week, should you decide to undertake it, is to consciously love yourself. I know we all say, yeah, I love myself. But I want you to really think about loving yourself. I just had a client this two weeks ago, and he said, how can I love myself? I said, you could go and buy some hand lotion and work on your feet and your hands. You know, we men don't take very good care of our feet and our hands, traditionally. And now it's shifting. And we are going for hand shell, foot shell, and facial. So that we, too, are worthy of playing footsie. <laughs> Without calluses. <laughs> so love yourself this week. Place notes on your refrigerator and bathroom mirror to remind you to love yourself. Place a little post-it on your desk at office to remind you to love yourself. My favorite one comes from author Louise Hay, and it is simply, I love and approve of myself. Can we say that? I love and approve of myself. And now do one thing more. Make yourself a Valentine's card from God. It might just be a simple note that says something like, Dear God child, I love you because. And then list 10 reasons your creator loves you. Or you might want to get more creative and elaborate and draw your own or cut pictures from a magazine or old cards and make a Valentine's card. You might even write yourself one of those silly Valentine's rhymes like, roses are red, violets are blue, here are 10 reasons I love you. <laughs> but this is a card to you from your creator God. Make it for yourself for Valentine's Day. You have two weeks. And then, if you, if, here's a dare for you. Bring it to church next Sunday and give them to me, and I'll put them on the notice board for Friendship Sunday, which is the, the, the Sunday nearest Valentine's Day. I believe it was the psychologist and psychoanalyst Eric Fromm who said, and I quote, our highest calling in life is precisely to take loving care of ourselves, unquote. And it's now been proven that when you change your attitudes about yourself, from the negatives you have internalized to a more positive self-concept, everything else in your life will change for the better. Isn't it wonderful that today's parents are learning, at least in our teaching, that that simple rule, that if you, if you teach your children the truth of their divinity and their beauty, and the fact that they're created out of, out of love and out of joy to succeed, that they don't come with all the baggage that we come with having been told you're worthless like your papa, or why you can't be pretty like your, 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 your big sister. You're so ugly, you couldn't be my picnic. My mother once told me I must have did find you. I was devastated. <laughs> devastated. <laughs> it was done with love, and I think maybe she did find me because I tell you, I gave them a hard time. <laughs> One of the secrets that turned me on to the science of mind as a way of life was the truth 
that life is lived from the inside out. In other words, friends, everything originates inside you and is then projected outward where you perceive it as the external world. I remember, as if it was yesterday, the Sunday message in which Dr. Elmer Lumsden, our late founding minister, said that our world is a mirror reflecting our consciousness. And I love it because one of the things that I loved about her is that whenever she's going to give a joke, she laughed first. Um, and then, don't laugh if you're bad. And she said, it's one of her famous Elmer-isms, quote, if you look in the mirror and your hair is untidy, don't comb the mirror. <laughs> so, we are affected only by what happens inside us, our own feelings, our own thoughts, and our own choices to love or not love. And that includes loving ourselves. And yet so many people constantly denigrate and belittle themselves all the time, thereby creating their own problems in life. It is a delusion, friends, to think that anybody else can hurt you or make you happy or make you feel good or bad about yourself. Nobody else is responsible for your pain or pleasure, your sorrow or your joy. There's a story from India about a woman who married a rich widower and found herself in the lap of luxury. The couple loved each other very, very much indeed, but there was a stain on, the, on the, the, the woman's happiness, and it was this. Her husband's son made no secret of his dislike of and resentment towards her. She did everything possible to ingratiate herself with him, but to no avail. Try as she might, she could not crack the cold barrier the boy had placed between them. And finally, in desperation, she seeks out a holy man who lives in a cave way up in the mountains. After an arduous climb and many hours of waiting, she obtains audience with the holy man and ex explains her predicament to him. My stepson hates me, she wailed. I would do anything in the world to win his love. The Holy One says, um, well, there is one way. Tell me, tell me, tell me, I'll, I'll pay any amount of money. Money is no object. The Holy Man explains that there is no charge for this assignment. But there is a task to be accomplished. She must seek out a dangerous man-eating tiger that lives in a cave several days' journey from her village. She must, unaided and without harming the animal, bring the holy man a hair plucked from the tiger's tail. The woman thanked him and hurried back home to tell her husband that she must go on this holy quest in order to heal the relationship with her stepson. Oh my God, I've got the answer. I have to go. Her husband tries to dissuade her, telling her, darling, I love you, that's all that matters. But she's obsessed with winning her stepson's love. So she goes on her holy mission, and after several days' journey, she finds the tiger's cave. But how will she get to pluck a, a hair without being devoured? Ah, oh, she ponders for a day or two. And then finally, she hits upon a plan. She places a plate of meat as near to the tiger's cave as she can risk going. And then she secretes herself and watches. Just as she thought, when it gets dark, the animal comes out, sniffs at it suspiciously, and then devours the plate of meat. The next day, she repeats the exercise, and again the tiger takes the bait. This goes on for six days, until the tiger is habituated to the situation, and then on the seventh day, she mixes in a sedative with the meat. As she had expected, the animal eats the bait and falls into a deep sleep, which allows her to pluck the coveted hair from its tail. The woman makes the return trek to the holy man and proudly presents him with her trophy, 
What now, she asked, will my stepson love me? <laughs> Only if you devote as much time and effort to loving yourself as you invested in winning your stepson's love. When you come to love that infinite, invisible intelligence that is your true self, you will know what you should think, do, and say in dealing with every other self. End of story, Jack Mandori. In Jamaica we say, may not choose none. I just give it to you for what it's worth. Friends, turn everything in your life over to the divine love within you. Love yourself out of sheer gratitude for the life that God gave you. You don't have to force things. You don't have to pluck a hair from a tiger's tail. But you are called to be part of the peace and love that is the very structure upon which the universe is built. Make the choice to love, and you will discover that you can make your life a work of heart. Please turn to your neighbor and say, the love in me beholds the love in you. Our lives are a work of heart. The love in me beholds the love in you. Our lives are a work of heart. The love in me beholds the love, beholds the love in you. Friends, the love in me, behold the love in you. Your, our lives are a work of heart. I love you. Namaste.